thank you father that indeed you are a faithful god this morning we pray unto you father that you alone you awake our souls oh god you awake the sleeping giant in us that father we will be enlightened oh god we thank you that lord indeed we your children we realize that the season of awakening is now and so father we pray that, Lord, indeed, we will not be blinded by the enemy anymore. But that, Father God, even as you, you, you speak to us, even as we pray to you, that, Lord, indeed, we shall be able to see that which you want us to see. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Good morning, good morning. I pray that we are well. Wow, it's so cold. Sorry that we are a bit late today. It's so cold. I didn't want to, <laughs> to get out of bed. Like, oh God, another 30 minutes, another 40 minutes, just another 40 minutes. And the 40 minutes was not coming. And God said, it's time to get up. So here we are. We thank God that we are alive. Well, it is cold. It's getting cold. So you better brace yourself for the cold outside. So yesterday... We began looking at opening the eyes of our hearts or opening the eyes of our understanding. We looked at uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, that's the scripture that we opened with. So we looked at uh, a few things that I would like to just run through. Uh, we go through the bit of today and then we pray. So we said that uh, yesterday that uh, we need our spiritual eyes to be opened, especially the times that we are living in, that we need to, to have our spiritual eyes opened so that we can have direction, you know, so that we can have direction. Maybe we are confused about decisions that we need to make, pertaining careers, pertaining businesses, pertaining marriage, whatever, churches, friendships, whatever. We need to be a people that are directed and so this is why we need to pray that our eyes can be open so number one we looked at the fact that we need to have our eyes our spiritual eyes open so that we can have direction number two we said we need to have spiritual eyes uh, open so that we can know how to pray targeted prayer we don't want to be praying amiss the scripture that we gave for for yesterday for for direction was numbers 22 verses 1 to 39 numbers 22 verses 1 to 39 and then for targeted prayer we said romans 8 verses 26 to 27 targeted prayers i don't want to be praying amiss i want to pray and pray rightfully and then number three we said to see new opportunities because this is the time when we need to get hold of the opportunities that have been laid, set up uh, ahead of us, we need to be in a position to jump at opportunities, opportunities to get into businesses, opportunity for you to run that company, to become the CEO, the manager, an employer. We need to jump at opportunities. You and I are the generation that God is going to, uh, to trust to run big businesses. We are going to start running businesses banks just open up to the idea so we need to have our eyes open that we can see the opportunities that god is setting in front of us and then we need to be uh, to have our eyes opened so that the secrets of the enemy can be seen so that we can see what the enemy is planning we don't want to miss him. We want to be able to identify the enemy from afar. And then number five, we say to see the wonder-waking power of God. There is wonder-waking power of God. And that is where we read Psalms 119 verses 18. That we can see the wondrous things that he is doing. The wondrous thing, the power that he has and what he's doing. And then we say, uh, finally, number six, that we need to have our spiritual eyes open so that, you know, to build our hope in God, to build our, our hope in God. God needs to open our eyes, you know, so that we can build our hope just as he was able to open the eyes of Elisha's servant, you know, so that his hope and confidence can be built. Sometimes we think that nothing is happening on the scene. 
There is so much calamity and chaos happening and we kind of give up, but God is still doing something behind the scenes. So today, I want us to look at the consequences of spiritual blindness. The consequences, if we are blind, if we are operating in the dark, we don't know, we are like, yeah, anyway, spiritual consequences. Uh, what are, are the uh, 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 spiritual blindness? What are the consequences of spiritual blindness? Number two, possibility of wasted effort and stagnance. We will have, there is a possibility of wasted effort and stagnance. You are just stagnant. You know, you waste uh, your effort on nothing. You just wasted your effort. You see, it's because you are blind. And then the stagnation, you are not moving. You are staying in one place because why? There is blindness. Number two, there is failure and missed opportunities, especially missed opportunities. Yesterday I was speaking to someone, you know, about uh, the, we, we are trying to, to deal with <coughs> stagnation. You know, we were dealing with stagnation yesterday and what stagnation does is it will cause you to lose uh, um, opportunities. There is opportunities that God has placed for you right in front, but because there is a spirit of stagnation, you then now are... Uh, 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 as uh, as stuck in one place, you miss opportunity. Stagnation comes with uh, what is it? Uh, procrasti procrastination. Yesterday it was so difficult to pronounce it. Procrastination. You know there is uh, there is there is things that God wants for you to overcome, but there is now a problem of procrastination. So you are you 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 miss opportunities. So this is where we, we, we are, stagnation, you know, and, and most of the time, you know, you find that maybe it is just because you are careless, maybe because you are busy, maybe because you are lazy. Do you, do you know that sometimes we get into that place because of being lazy, you are lazy. So instead of getting up to do that, which you are supposed to do, you don't, you don't get up to do it because of this stagnation it's a spirit and it needs to be it needs to be to be dealt with it needs to be dealt with and we can't allow the enemy to steal from us we can't allow that not at all so uh where am i now my notes my notes my notes my notes all right Bl we are looking at the consequences of blindness and we have said that uh it is uh, the thing of, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, missed opportunities, uh, which we have said can be as a result of stagnation as well, all right? And then possibility uh, of praying amiss, which I've, or, I've already uh, talked about. Possibility of praying amiss. We want to be able to pray targeted prayers. That's what we said. We want to pray and hit the mark. So there is a, a possibility of praying amiss. So we need to have our spiritual eyes so that we can pray properly. Consequences of blindness and then possibility of going towards the wrong direction. We, you know, God is saying, let's go this direction. This is the direction he has chosen. But because you are blind, you are going the opposite direction of where God is leading you. And then there is a possibility of losing hope. This time, so many people have lost so much hope. They have lost so much, so much hope. They are not moving forward because there is no hope. They have given up. And then there is a possibility of making wrong decisions. We, because we are blind. Then we make wrong decisions. Those are the six uh, consequences of spiritual blindness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sorry, thank God I'm alone in the room. I don't have to use a mask. <laughs> and it's in my hub anyway. 
this generation that we are in. So consequence of spiritual blindness, those six, possibility of wasted effort and stagnation. I'll talk a little bit about stagnation, failure and missed opportunities, and then possibility of praying amiss, possibility of going towards the wrong direction, mm -hmm. lost hope, possibility of making the wrong decision. And then what are the causes? What are the causes of spiritual blindness? What causes spiritual blindness? Because God can decide to open my eyes or not to open my spiritual eyes at times. So I want to read 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6 verses 18 to 20. So when the sirens came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, strike these people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Now Elisha said to them, this is not the way, nor is this the city. Follow me and I'll bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. So it was when they had come to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw and they were and and there they were inside Samaria. So there are two things. God can decide to open or not to open spiritual eyes, causes, sin can also cause our spiritual eyes to be blind, just like Balaam. Balaam, we read yesterday, it was a scripture in Numbers, where, uh, uh, where he, uh, the Lord said he should not go, to go and bless the children, I mean, curse the children of Israel. All right? He was a powerful prophet. So he got on his donkey and the donkey saw the angel and the donkey turned around going another direction. And he hit the donkey because he, the donkey was going in the wrong direction. But here is a powerful man of God and he's blind until the donkey even spoke. You must read the scripture. The donkey even spoke. Why are you hitting me? You know? So sin can cause our spiritual eyes to be blind, just like Balaam, all right? And then what we need to do, what is it that we need to do? Because we don't want to be blind. We need to pray to God to open our spiritual eyes, finish and clap. There is no magic. We just need to pray to God and ask him to open our eyes. That's what Psalms 118 verses, uh, Psalms 119 verses 18 says, Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. So we pray to God that he can open our eyes, that we can see the seasons that we, can, we are in, that we can understand the times that we live in. And also Ephesians 1.18, which we read again yesterday, says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know that uh, you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So we need to pray and ask God to open our eyes. We need to obey God and stay away from sin. Stay away from sin. Stay away from the things that are a hindrance. We do not want anything to come between us and God. We want our prayers to be heard. Uh -uh. We are in different season now. When we pray and hold our hands together, we need to see things begin to change. So we need to be able to Obey. They say obeying is very difficult. Obeying is very difficult. We hate to hear the word obey, but we have got to obey God. We have got to stay away from sin. We have got to be a generation that meditate on the word of God. What does Uzziah say? Uzziah 4 verses 6. Meditate on the word of God. So, Uzziah 4, verse 6, what does it say? My people are destroyed 
for the lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest for me. Oh, Jesus. Because you have a, a rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest for me. That's what the Bible says. Straightforward. So, we have got to meditate on the word of God. We have got to be a generation that has given or sold out totally to Jesus. Pastor Martha had a, 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 a status on, on um, WhatsApp for a long time, sold out to Jesus. You, are, you should be sold out forever. Give your life totally to God. If you have not done so, you, we have got to confess our sins to God and we must believe in the resurrection of power of God. We have got to believe that one of the desires of, of, of God is that we must have our eyes opened, our spiritual eyes opened. It is my prayer that we are not going to be left hanging. We are not going to be a people that prays amiss, but we are going to be a people whose eyes have been opened by God. Amen. So this generation that I am dealing with, I believe that it is a generation, it is a generation that is not lazy. I believe that we are a generation that will move up. We are a generation who are not careless. We are a generation who are not busy for nothing. So whatever is happening, we have got to be, to get to a position where we are organized. I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I was going to say a little bit more about stagnation because, uh, and, and procrastination, because sometimes we become busy with things. And now that is blindness we have seen. It is, a, it is one of the things that is uh, the enemy will use. We are blind. We are busy for nothing. Busy bees. There is no fruit. There is no productivity. Because we have become careless. We have become busy. Whatever the reason, the, we begin to put off things. No, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Come on. The season that we are in do not require stagnation. The season that we are in requires for us to get to a point whereby we get up and begin to do things. So you, you and I, if at all we are dealing with an issue of, of, of stagnation, we have got to recognize, we have got to come to a place where we recognize that there is a problem here. Why is it that I keep on putting off things? Mm? Filing is one of my problems. Nandipa knows very well. So I'll put it there, it will be filed. No, let's just put it there, it's filing. Now, it, because me, I've got a problem with that, putting things off. It's now even affecting her. She's now looking because, oh, Pastor Mary said tomorrow. So I bow, I bow. Are you that person? So I'll say, no, I, I'll come and uh, fold off these clothes later. I'll come and do this you know, putting off. That is not right. As a child of God, we have got to get on our feet. We have got to come to a place where we realize there is a problem here. There is a problem here. I was never like this. I never put things off. Recognize that there is a problem and deal with it. Because in Psalms uh, 119, the same scripture that we read, Psalms 119 verses 59, the Bible says, I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statutes. So that means you have got to consider yourself, you have got to come to a place of recognition that there is a problem. Why am I putting things off? Recognize that there is a problem. And after you have recognized that there is a problem, you have got to seek out the root. What is the root cause of this stagnation? Why am I staying in one place? Why am I putting things off? What is the root? Is it fear? Is it fear or am I lazy? Am I just lazy to get up? What is it? Because fear has got a tendency of robbing us the things that God wants us to have. 
So what is the problem? What is the root? Why am I always putting things off? Why am I always behind? Psalms 26 verses 2 says, test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. So I am trying to get to a, 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 a position where I recognize what is the root. So then I go, test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. Psalms 26 verses 2. Show me the root why I am always behind. And then pray to God for, for, for wisdom. Pray to God for, for wisdom on a plan. Pray to God so that he, you, when you come to a place of dealing with this stagnation, putting off, you have got a, a plan. You need to seek and ask God for wisdom on how you are going to overcome the weakness, this problem that I have seen of putting off. The Lord hears prayers when they come from a sincerely repentant heart, they ha a heart that wants to change. So then I ask him for wisdom. I ask him by faith to help me. And once I have prayed, I have got to get to a position where I begin to listen to him. And I begin to start dealing with, um, what is it, unbelief. I begin to, to tell myself, I can do this. You know, maybe God has said, it's about time you began a business. But you are so afraid of failure. You have got to get up and deal with it. You are missing opportunities and that is what the enemy is doing. You are missing opportunities. The enemy is snatching blessings out of your very hands. So you have got to tackle unbelief. Believe God. Begin to do the thing. In fact, you have got to start with the most difficult thing of the task, the most difficult one, the one that you are saying that I cannot do this. You begin tackling it. If you tackle the most uh, hardest thing to do, you find that everything else will just begin to flow because you have begun with the most toughest thing. Most of us, we are given most of the times we are given advice as start with the easy one first. You know, do with the easy one if you can do the easy one. No, me, I'm saying begin with the hardest one. The one that is the most difficult part of the project. That is the one that you must do. It goes against your mindset. But you have got to tell your, your, yourself that you, you are able to do this. You are able, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you begin with the most difficult, uh, uh, difficult part. Get someone that can hold you accountable. Get someone. Maybe you have discovered that ish, even my chomi is bad. Both me and my chomi, we are stagnant. We are not moving. Get an accountability partner. Get someone that you, you, you can trust. You can account each other. Someone that will check up on you. Somebody that will correct you. This is how you deal with things. We have got to be accountable people. We are a chosen generation that needs to do things differently. The way God is leading us and to where God is leading us, it does not not need lazy people, people who want to stay in one place. We have got to deal with limitation, stagnation, procrastination. All these things have got no place to where God is taking us. So you get somebody that is going to hold you accountable. Push yourself to accomplish your goals one day at a time. Push yourself. Write down the things that you know God is saying you need to accomplish. Ezekiel, I mean Exodus 23 verses 30 says, Little by little I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of your land. Little by little I will drive them out. God is dealing with your enemies. Get up and do something because God is doing something. So you have got to be able to get up. The Bible says, I, I do not despise the small beginning. So I get up and I, little by little, I achieve go by go one time at a time until I am at a place whereby I have achieved the things that God has called me to do. Spiritual blindness 
Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. It is not supposed to be following us anywhere. We are a generation that gets up. We are not lazy. We are not uh, 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 busy for nothing. Whatever we set our minds to do is done. And we prayed last week that nothing would die in our hands. We prayed and we, we dedicated, was it last week or the other week when we were praying, that nothing would die in our hands. That whatever we get to do, it shall prosper. It is now 6.32. We have got to pray. As I said yesterday, we will be stopping at 6.32, I mean 6.30 with the word and then we go into prayer. So... Let's go into prayer. Yesterday, I was chatting to someone that said, there are so many prayer requests for people who are sick. I think you saw the way that I shared yesterday, last night. I didn't even share prayer points. I just gave direction because we have got so many people who are sick right now. They are asking for prayers. They are on ventilating machines. And if it is us here in SA, Due to the fact that we we had uh, looting last week and people were not mindful of what they were doing, we, we 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 have been hearing on the news. We are trying to avoid the news, but at the same time, we don't want to be found in a place whereby we don't know what's ar around us. I believe that we, we know that God wants us to be aware of the times that we are in, so we don't just shut off the news. We still listen. So they are talking about the fact that people were looting and there was no social distancing, there was no uh, following the preventative measures that have been put in place, that we are going to be dealing with uh, high numbers of infections. And not only that, uh, it's very cold. The, the coming few days are very cold. Some parts of Cape Town are even experiencing snow. So as a result, Kauten and other provinces are also now becoming very cold. So viruses thrive when there is um, uh, the, the temperatures are right, like coldness. So as we don't want vi that virus to thrive, we want God to deal with that virus and to totally eradicate that virus. So let us begin to pray this morning. So we are going to stand in the gap for the sick as usual and then also just praying that God uh, takes away this, this disease, this virus out of our land, out of our nations. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Oh, thank you this morning, mighty God. We honor you, oh God. We worship you, Father, for who you are. Glory be unto you. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all glory. You are worthy of all honor. You are worthy. Father, thank you this morning, mighty God, that indeed you have added yet another day unto our lives. <coughs> thank you that we are alive this morning. Father, we do not take this life for granted because, Lord, we realize that there are others that have been not been able to get out of bed. There are others who are sick. There are others who are lying sick, Father God. Lord, we want to thank you for this life that you have given us. We commit ourselves unto you this morning as we appreciate Father God, as we appreciate the breath inside of us. We appreciate the air that is inside of our lungs. We continue to pray, Father, for those who are sick, the many prayer requests that we have received, Father God, the many messages, Father, that we, are, we have received. Each one of them, Lord, those who we know, those who we are connected to, Lord, I, I'm not in a position to mention names, but Father, you know each one of us on this forum this morning, even those that will listen later. Father, each one of us is aware of someone that is sick. We are aware of someone that is sick in their homes, connected to us, a family member. Lord, we look to you this morning for, for healing. We look to you for healing because you are Jehovah. You are our healer. You are the one that sent your word and you healed our diseases. We look to you, Yahweh, for healing. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, even as we have said, we have encouraged them to trust you. We have encouraged them to trust you for healing. We have encouraged them, Father, to continue to follow and to take the medication. Lord, we know that healing is in you. Medication that they have to drink, Father, we are surrendering it unto you, Father. It is a vessel that you use. We pray that, Father God, you will touch that vessel. That, Lord, indeed, when they drink that medication, Father, they will be healed. Father, we thank you, Lord, indeed, that indeed you are our healer. You are our healer. And so this morning, we lay our spiritual hands upon the sick. We lay our spiritual hands upon those who are ill in bed. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that you will remove the sickness, whatever it is, my God, whether it is cancer, whether it is ulcers, whether it is tuberculosis, whether it is HIV, whether it is COVID-19, whether it is diabetes, whatever it is, my God, it has got a name and we command it that it will bow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are the one that sent your son to die at the cross. He who did not know sin became sin for our righteousness. And we thank you that at the cross of Calvary, he bore our sicknesses and our diseases. Father, we thank you that your broken body, your body was broken so that we could be made whole. And so this morning, we are trusting you for healing, Father. Heal those that are sick, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak healing, Father God. We send a word of healing, Father, to the sick, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are gasping for air, those who are not able to breathe on their own, breathe in them, my God. Breathe in them, my God. Awaken them. Awaken them from their sick bed, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we surrender lives. We surrender many unto you, O oh God. We pray that you would touch the sick. You will heal the sick in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that are struggling, my God, with the after effects of COVID-19. Father God, we pray that you will deal with it, my God. Help your people, Father God. We have got nowhere else but to go but you and to you, Father. You are our Number one, number two, number three, number hundred option. There is no other option, my God. And so, Father, we look to you during this time that you would touch those that are not well, Father God. We command healing, my God. We believe healing is our daily bread. And so, Father, we are trusting you that, Father, they will walk in healing, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we are praying. That, Lord, all the uh, after effects of COVID-19, Father, all the symptoms, the cough, the irritating cough, the no having taste, the no having sense of smell, the pains, my God, all the symptoms, Lord, you will deal with them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we refuse that, Lord, indeed, this virus is going to spread like fire. But we are praying that, Lord, you will remove it, you will eradicate it. There will, it, there will not be traces of COVID-19, Father God, in our circles. There will not be traces of COVID-19 in our nations, my God. Deal with this COVID-19 in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak healing over those who are sick during this time. In the mighty name of Jesus, many are isolated from their loved ones. And they feel, Father God, hopeless. They feel cut off. They feel unloved. During this time, Lord, we stand together in agreement. And we pray that, Father, you alone will touch them. You alone, you will heal them. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will comfort them. You will show them that you are a God who never leave nor forsake them. That, Father, indeed, they will sense your presence. You are God who will never leave your children alone. Father, during this time, we pray 
believe that, Lord, they will be encouraged that, Father, they are isolated for the good, for the sake of their family. You are isolating them, Father God, that indeed they may get well, they may get healed, oh God, that indeed they will not be in a position to pass on the infection to them, to members of their families. You will assure them of your love, my God. We pray that, Father God, you will touch and you will heal. You will visit those isolation homes, those rooms, those bedrooms, wherever it is, my God. Lord, we look to you, Yahweh. We are trusting you for, for, your, for your healing power. We are trusting you, Father God, that indeed traces of COVID-19 are being removed. You are eradicating it from our land, from our nations, my God, from across the nations, my God. Father God, we thank you. That indeed your hand, your hand of healing is upon the nation. You said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Father, we are your people. We are your people. We have humbled ourselves. We have prayed. We have repented of our wicked ways. We have turned away on behalf of our nations, oh God. And so we ask that you heal our land. You heal our nation, my God. Heal this nation. Heal Africa. Heal the world, my God, of this COVID-19. Remove it, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, my God. We look to you, Yahweh. We are trusting you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, even as we have looked at your words today about opening our eyes, our spiritual eyes, our eyes of understanding, Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will open up our eyes. We do not want to deal with the consequences of spiritual blindness. And so, Father, even as you have taught us today, Lord, we pray and we trust you that we are a generation that will understand the seasons that we are in. In the mighty name of Jesus, we understand the seasons, we understand the times that we are in. We do not want to deal with consequences of blindness, my Father. And so we are praying, Father, that indeed we shall have our eyes wide open, that whatever we do, we will not have wasted effort. We will not be stagnant in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that we will not fail in any way. We will not miss opportunities, my God, but we are praying that we will take advantage of the seasons that we are in. That, Lord, we will take advantage of, 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 of the times that we are living in. We pray that, Father, our eyes will be opened. That, Lord, even as we pray, we will recognize the works of the enemy. We will recognize the tricks of the enemy. That we will not be in positions where we pray amiss, my God. That, but that God we will be able to pray targeted prayers. That, Lord, we will not be found in a place where we are going in the opposite direction of where you are leading us. But that, Lord, we will move in the direction that you are causing us to move. We pray that, Father, we will not lose your hope but we will be able to have our spiritual eyes opened to see that which you are doing. We pray that we will make the right decisions, my God, that we will be able to make the decisions as directed by you. We are praying that, Father, if at all there is any sin in our life, if at all there are any things in our life that has caused us to be blind, Father God, forgive us. This is why we repent that, Lord, you will forgive us of the sins that we have committed knowingly and unknowingly. Because, Lord, we do not want to be found wanting. We do not want to be spiritually blind, my God. And so we ask you that, Lord, you will forgive us and you will open our spiritual eyes. You will open our spiritual eyes, my God. You will cause us to stay away from sin. You will cause us to use wisdom, my God. You will cause us to be able to meditate on your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that indeed this generation is a chosen, a different generation. And Lord, where we have been stagnant, 
where we have been stagnant due to busyness or laziness or whatever it is, my Father. We are praying that, Father, you will forgive us. You will forgive us, my God. You will show us the root cause of the stagnation in our lives. That, Lord, will be able to deal with it, my God. We pray that, Father God, you will help us even to plan going forward, my God. You will give us wisdom to be able to move forward, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will cause us to be able to take action, to handle the tasks that have been laid before us, that we will be able to handle even the most difficult tasks, my God, that we will not be running away from them, but that, Lord, we shall be able to handle them. Cause us to be able, Father, to find people that will, will help us accountable. Bring people in our circles of life that will bring, Father God, life, that will speak life, that will hold us accountable, my God. We thank you that, Lord, you will help us to push our goals forward, my God. We are a generation that is not afraid. We do not fear. We thank you, Father, that we succeed in everything that we do. And so, Lord, today as we go about our daily activities, Father, we thank you that we will get up. We are not lazy. We will get up and do something. Father, we thank you that you are opening our eyes to see the opportunities. We are open, you are opening our eyes to see the enemy from afar. We are wide awake. You've awakened us to the seasons that we are in. And so, Father, we thank you that this day is going to be a good day. We thank you for giving us wisdom, for giving us direction in everything that we need to do. Thank you today, Father God. Thank you for removing fear from amongst us. Thank you for removing anxiety, stress, and everything else. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen and amen. So today we have dealt with some important aspects of God opening our eyes. I pray that you will get up from where you have been. If you have been putting off doing something, please get up and do it. Practical, practical. Put, put the word into action, into practice. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Remember, tomorrow is Wednesday and Wednesday we fast and we pray. So today, spend the day winning yourself off the things that you need to win yourself off so that tomorrow we can have a good time of prayer and fasting. I love and I appreciate each one of you. Shalom, shalom.